there's not a whole lot of difference between trapping red fox and coyotes in my area. Just something about the smell of a good glandle, it really takes you back. You know, 20 years ago, when I was starting to get into trapping, it was red fox. That's what everybody wanted. You know, coyotes in my area were kind of obsolete. You'd hear about a guy catching one every now and then. But, you know, red fox were the target. So that's where I actually cut my teeth at, you know, learning to trap was trapping red fox. And then as the coyotes came in, you know, kind of pushed those little fellows out. But every time I open a bottle of this or I see fox tracks, you know, I get a little excited because that's what I got started doing. The years of 100 fox, now are you looking at 20 or 30? It's just really sad. But that's what's nice about taking both these animals. The same techniques can be used. This week, we're going to Ohio, and then we're going to come back on my PA line. We're going to be trapping red fox. Stay tuned. It's trapping time. <laughs> Trapping, an art form that has stood the test of time. A heritage built upon hard work, dedication, and pride. Rooted deep with the main goal of conservation, we, as trappers, live this history 365 days a year. With the help of some great friends, Along with the love and support of my family, I'm carrying on that tradition. With all the pitfalls that I may encounter, the rewards more than outweigh the costs. Many of the greatest trappers in history have etched their name in time. This is my story. This is my time. This is trapping time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Vapple at VappleProducts.com Jeb's Chokes at Jeb'sChokes.com Blind Turtle at BlindTurtle.net Smokey's Deer Lures at Smokey'sDeerLore.com Blackwater Hunting Services at BlackwaterHunting.com Southern Ohio Outfitters at SouthernOhioOutfitters.com Big Game Gut Glove at BigGameGutGlove.com Dakota Line Snares at DakotaLineSnares.com PCS Outdoors at PCSOutdoors.com Duke Trap Company at DukeTraps.com Deep South Trapping Lures at DeepSouthLures.com Webster's Predator Control at Shop.WebstersPredatorControl.com Little Whiskey Girl at LittleWhiskeyGirl.com Wolf Creek Products at WolfCreekProducts.net Southern Snares and Supply at southernsnares.com and console energy at consoleenergy.com this property that we're trapping it is coyote country to the max so anytime you can get a red fox it's just an added bonus we're looking at a thousand acres of overgrown country and we made this set right where two roads converge we were seeing a lot of sign there but there was just you know something that just kept us from putting a set there and finally we said you know what we got to put a set in here and we did and it connected Got a hay bale set here that hasn't hit yet, which is very surprising because there's coyote tracks all the way down this road. I mean, every year we catch them right here. It's just a perfect place for them to travel. It brings everything together. I mean, this this property's been loaded up with coyotes. We haven't caught hardly anything. I mean, we haven't caught anything. So, I mean, we had two rabbits taken out of traps for us. So, I mean, the coyotes are definitely in here. I mean, the ground's hard. It's been single digits here for the last three or four weeks. I mean, I know they're hungry. They should be working the sets a little bit better. I think it's just one of those things that we're going to hit location, hit the right location, and once it starts happening, it's really going to happen. But sometimes it gets a little frustrating because you you know they're here, they're not working sets, and you're like, what do I do? Do I pull or, or what? So we're going to stick it out and leave it out here just a little bit longer. we got a dirt hole here we punched in because we were seeing all kinds of sign and weren't catching anything. Oh, baby. Look at there. That's a pretty high red. It's the first thing we've caught on this property. This is one of those locations we just punched in the other day and it finally paid off for us. We had to come and fall some traps out yesterday. Was fortunate enough to catch a coyote, but uh, oh, that's a pretty fox. It's a real pretty fox. It never gets old catching those things. 
where I'm at in PA, I mean, when I was in college, we were catching, you know, 80 to 100 a season. Now the coyotes moved in, so that's that's more of a dream. Now, out towards the eastern part of the state, those guys are catching hundreds, but anytime you can catch a red fox, it's a lot of fun. And this property here, we never see them here. It's, it's weird. It's weird, but all right, let's get him out of the trap. You know, when we made a decision to put a set there, I wasn't surprised that we were going to connect almost immediately. When we come back, we're going to dive into this remake. But first, our friends at Consol Energy are leading the way in conservation. In 2011, the world of shotgun chokes changed forever. Bobby Sears took his Jeb's Head Hunter Precision Choke Tube to the NWTF Wild Turkey Still Target National Championships and brought home the gold. Shortly after, the Game On team got on board. By stacking the shot in front of the wad cup inside the choke tube before it exits your gun barrel, Jeb's can extend your effective range way beyond anything you've ever seen. So don't get worked up about a turkey that's just out of range. Ruin his day with a Jeb's Head Hunter Choke Tube. What do you demand in a quality knife? You want a knife that works as hard as you do. Weeby knives are made for trappers who want efficiency and perfection. The Weeby Elite double-edged fleshing knife has one edge that's ultra sharp, and the other side has just the right edge for pushing fat and beet for perfectly fleshed furs. And don't forget about the Weeby Wicked Sharp, the planet's sharpest skinner. When the blade goes dull, simply snap on a new one, and you're ready to go. Find them at dakotalionsnares.com. When you're trapping, wind can play a major factor. This particular property here, the wind is always swirling. So we knew the dogs were traveling this road, so we decided we were going to put a set on the right-hand side of the road and a set on the left-hand side of the road. We figured, you know what, no matter which way the wind was blowing, we had a good chance they were going to connect. Now let's dive into this set. This is perfect. What we got here, we got two roads coming together, and this fox came right up here. We put a dirt hole here and we've got one over there. Just a little bit of variety and it, they're gonna come by it. And one thing about it, we're using Smokey's Fox and Coyote bait. It's gotten loud and this time of year, it's it's real easy for them to smell. They don't have to, you don't have to be as on location when you're using a lure like this. But I mean, this is a beautiful, he, he's cherry. I mean, he's awesome. Got the black legs, just what you wanna see in a red fox. Now he's got this place tore up pretty good. All this fox sitting around here, we may not relure it. I'll see what the dirt hole looks like. The bait may still be in there. We'll knock all this stuff back around here and uh, we'll rebed the trap in the same exact spot. A lot of times, you catch a coyote, you're going to want to take and make another set, rebake that one, and make another one offside. When I catch a fox, I don't like doing that. I love that foxy smell. We're just going to take advantage of it and uh, let him be the lure. I like to use Duke 175s right there as a prime example. We've got a good pad catch. It's a trap strong enough to uh, hold a coyote. It's not going to do any damage to foxes though. And with fox prices being what they are compared to a coyote, you don't want to lose any of these little guys. All right, find our dirt hole here. This ground is so froze, it froze when we put it in so we didn't get real deep and dig this trap bed out. I think I need a jackhammer to try to get through this stuff. Wow. But that's why they're on the move. It's because this, the ground's froze, it's cold, and they're doing whatever they can to get something to eat. Now because it is freezing and thawing, we take a little bit of peat moss here. I'm going to throw it in the bottom. Act like an insulator for it. that pan setting level. And we're gonna get this put right back in where we had it. I bought some peat moss the other day. It must have been wet, because it's all clumped up. All right, we got the set made. We are gonna get a little bit of smokies. We're gonna scrape what's left out of this jar. 
I get to do so much of this stuff. We can get a good whiff of that. Whew. That's good stuff right there. Stuff it down in that hole. I'm not even really worried about getting it down in deep because they've already been working the set. They know stuff's there. All right, remade. We may kick a little bit of this stuff around here. I don't want to take too much out of it because we've got all the smell here. We may kick a little bit back here just to act a little bit as a little bit of a backing, but they should work it from the front. And away we go. You know, I'm never disappointed when I have a red fox in the set. I see it as an added bonus. When we come back, we're headed to Mississippi with Justin Rogers for the set of the week. And he's gonna run up a little tree a couple of times. I don't know where the drag's at. He didn't, he didn't go very far. The Big Game Gut Glove is revolutionizing the way big game hunters and trappers are successful in the field. The 26 inch version fits over your elbows and protects you and your expensive hunting clothing from blood or cold water. They're made to fit your hands from extra small to extra large. What I like about them, I can feel with them. Existing products on the market don't give you the feel or protection you need. Wet or dry, the special non-slip grip bonds tightly to whatever you're handling. The Big Game Gut Gloves are reusable so you save money and promote going green. Do you need a blind that will keep you warm on a cold winter day? Do you need a blind that won't blow away on a windy fall afternoon? Do you need a blind that will never wear out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need a Blind Turtle Hard Shell Hunting Blind. This solid one-piece unit is perfect for deer hunters, turkey hunters, archery hunters, and gun hunters. Put it this way, if you hunt, the Blind Turtle is perfect for you. Where'd you get all that stuff? DakotaLineSnares.com. I bet it cost you a fortune to ship all that. Nope, not DakotaLineSnares.com. It's $9.95, flat rate. It doesn't matter what you get. Dakota Line Snares and Trapping Products has everything you need right at your fingertips. Our warehouse is packed with trapping supplies you need to be successful on your trap line. And with flat rate shipping of $9.95 on all orders, you get your money's worth. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to put my order in at DakotaLineSnares.com now. For those of you who don't know, Justin Rogers is owner of Deep South Lures, you know, and he's trapping in Mississippi. I was fortunate enough to go down there and turkey hunt with him this spring, and the type of terrain and ground that he's trapping is so much different than what we're trapping up north. I mean, he's fighting with water and mud, and they don't have the freezing and falling conditions that we have, but, you know, it's good to, from a trapper's perspective to see how somebody else does it in a completely different part of the United States when they're trapping the same type of animal. All right, first trap check we got here. We got a um, little dirt hole set with some uh, bait in the, down in the hole. See it got work, trap's gone, it's gonna drag. We also got a uh, turkey feather here as an attractor. Gonna, uh, trap's gonna drag, so we'll see. We saw see some drag marks right here. Going up through here. There's the drag, and look at there. We got a great fox. No pad damage, got a big shock spring on it. Good deal. We're gonna um, dispatch this little guy and do the remake. It's a gumbo, wet gumbo swamp mud. You really can't pack it real good in here. So we're just gonna line it a little peat. Number three, Victor Soft Cats are really targeting bobcats in here, really. These gray fox are very good. Here. Got a little polyfill in my pan. You really don't need that with this peat, but I still like to do it for the sake just for the heck of it. Good. I'm not worried about it freezing down here where we're at. So I'm gonna pack this whole wet gumbo back around these jaws.
chain back up. We just gonna throw it back here behind this thing. It ain't gonna bother them. I'm making this really for cats, so I'm all kind of really crowd these cats in here. So, I want that cat to approach right up through here. Now it's a pretty big kill area, but I don't want it. No sticks to hit my jaws. I really don't cover it. I leave it open like that. I'm gonna. We'll put a little lure back in there. Reset this dirt hole right quick. Cause I, Jerry talked about the big traps, and a lot of folks don't like big traps on things around here. You don't need that big of a trap. You probably don't, but we got a lot of cats and some cows in here, so I like using these big traps. But I want to show that trap's got laminated jaw but on it. And I always want to show this fox was caught, the gray fox number three, laminated jaws, four coils, no foot damage. A lot of folks on these trapping farms and stuff, they complain you use these big traps and soft folks like them, but no foot damage whatsoever on that fox. So that's why I like these big traps, but if you're going to use them, I like to use these laminations on them because they don't cut your feet on these big traps when you got those laminated jaws. Of course, I got that big shock spring on there, and you can see it's been, you got some wear on it, on these things. It really, it really helps out. Helps me. We're going, we're harvesting the animals, but you don't, we want them to be, feel as, you know, less stress and everything while they're in those traps. Thanks a lot, Justin. That's a pretty cool looking set. When we come back, we're going to one of my favorite places to trap in Pennsylvania, Uncle George's. better to get your trapping supplies from than trappers who know what you need in the field. Come on in. PCS Outdoors is one-stop shopping for name brand trapping, predator hunting and calling supplies, shooting and pest control gear at discount prices. A lure for every animal you'd be targeting. PCS Outdoors stands above the competition. Quality Asabo brand snares being made here in Michigan. Go to PCSOutdoors.com for great selection and prices that'll make you want to stock up for your next trapping or outdoor adventure. The trophy moment only lasts a couple of seconds, but the story will be passed on for generations. They only see the glory, not the sacrifice. But I don't wait for my tall tale of glory. I handcraft my journey from start to finish. They don't see what goes on behind closed doors. An epic saga is worth a thousand words, but my story boils down to three. Little Whiskey Girl. Save luck for the weekend hunter. 
My Uncle George's is probably one of my favorite places to trap. I've been trapping there since I was a kid, and I've got locations on there that I just know are gonna hit. Now this nice red here was taken right at the edge of a field. This is big timber that comes in. There's a corner of a fence here. This naturally funnels these fur bears into one spot. What I did, I put two dirt holes. You'll hear people say it's hard to catch a fox in the woods. Not if he's coming through there anyways. That's all you gotta just keep in your mind. If I was a fox, why would I be going in here? Mice, chipmunks, squirrels. We're using this field in this corner of this fence as a natural funnel to bring these animals right here. I am not 10 feet from the corner of this fence. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of collar like on one of the posts just to bring the, the animals in. That way when they get in there, that draws them in close. And then when they get the chance to smell our lure um, and our dirt holes or flat sets. Now I put two dirt holes here. I caught a possum here about three or four days ago and nothing else. We had a big cold spell come in. These foxes are starting to run now. So what's the easiest way? They're gonna come the easiest way they can get to anywhere. There's a big bench that goes around this woods. They're gonna come out through this field looking for mice, hit the woods, and keep on hunting. This fox really tore this place up, so which is really good because now we've got the eye appeal we want. When these foxes come working down through here, coyotes, they come working down along here, they're really, it's gonna catch your eye. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dig that dirt hole right back out again. We've had some heavy rains, so you can hear the mud and see the mud in there. All right, we're gonna get the mud cleaned out of this dirt hole. Get the rest of this dirt out of here. I'm gonna clean this trap bed out. Cause we're gonna put this thing right back in here again. This fox really did a number on this on this set. Here. You're gonna, you want to make sure your clap, the trap is clean enough. That way it'll refire. So you want to take and get all this mud everything off of it all right we've got the mud all cleaned off the trap so now we're going to reset it i like to use my trial to help me get a little more leverage on setting it We want this pan to lay as flat as possible. So, take it. Perfect. Now, we're gonna put the trap right back in this bed again. Take some nice dirt bring back in around here. I don't like to put dirt over top of the jaws, but I will put it around the outside so we can get it packed in. That way if that animal comes in, he's not stepping on loose dirt. I want to make sure I leave dirt off of my levers because I want them to be able to fire. We've got some crazy freezing and thawing happening. We want to make sure this trap will fire if anything comes in. We're gonna get our peat moss. Take and blend that in. We're gonna take this rock right here. That's gonna be our backing. If you want, a lot of times guys will scrape some of this fluff up around here just to kind of make things look more natural I like to use wool as a lure holder we're gonna take that since we've already had a fox in here we're gonna take some type of gland lure food gland lure and we're gonna put it in there we're not going to use any urine. I usually use urine, but we're not going to use any on this one. Because I figure there's plenty enough from last night. And then take some of this dirt and cover that in. That's a remake on a dirt hole. 
There's not a lot of difference between trapping red fox and coyotes. They have a lot of similarities. You know, they're both attracted to the same type of lures, the same baits, and even the same urns. Many times on my coyote sets, I use red fox urine. These two animals are competing for the same type of food. You know, that's this week's show. Until next time, we're keeping the tradition alive here on Trapping Time. Remember to set your DVRs every Tuesday at 8.30 on Dish Network Channel 266. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at Trapping Time. I personally am going to list every week the conventions, the events we're going to be at. Also, we're going to be posting videos, anything rela trapping related that's going to make you a better trapper and help fuel your trapping addiction. Why do you get so much closer to the red fox than you do the coyotes? Well, have you seen the size difference between a red fox and a coyote? I mean, you're looking at 35 pounds of mean machine there in a coyote and a timid little 10 to 12 pound red fox. Now, what would you do? So you're saying you're not afraid of a fox? I'm not afraid of a fox. <laughs> <laughs>